Hello, AIA guy. Alright. <sighs> so, anti mage happens to be one of my better heroes. Um, let's start off with why are you doing this? So, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> you're not AFK, I see the mouse moving. So, there's no reason to sit there and take that many shots from a Wind Ranger. That's pretty bad. Uh, give you kills. Oh, okay, so you just stop there. Alright, <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming this game might be slightly trolly because uh, I did see that you bought a Shadow Blade in it, but um, we'll see. So, to so start off with the, the starting item builds, um, that's pretty good. Um, I usually don't favor the sticks too much because you usually just throw them away. It's very, very, very rare I get a wand, like maybe like one out of a hundred games. Um, <coughs> I'd prefer to just save the gold and get um, two, uh, another, either another set of tangos or, um, I th yeah, I think you get stout eight tango salve. Like, we'll back up for a second. So, the thing starts out, you're choosing your item build. Let's think what their lanes are going to be. So they got a gyro, a lycan, wind ranger, earth shaker, and a wyvern. Uh, okay, so this is probably about what you could reasonably expect their lane to be. So they, they could have had a Lycan mid, they could have had a Wind Ranger mid. Um, you could assume you're probably going to be against some stupid dual lane, since it is low level pubs. Like I, I guess it's pretty reasonable. So in this case, you got a Gyro and an Earth Shaker. Uh, you could have been, you could have had a Wind Ranger. She was probably going mid. Uh, the Earth Shaker was probably going to be there. It could have been a Wyvern Gyro. Could have been a Lycan Wyvern. Some combination of that. So th they ran this lanes, these lanes pretty good. This is not a bad idea. Uh, so because of your, your initial skill, uh, in this lane it probably wouldn't have mattered too much, but you usually do want your mana break level 1, which gives you some harass potential. In this lane it probably doesn't matter too much, because uh, you can't really walk up and just start harassing them, because you'd get fucked up. Because um, you'd just get immediately like rocket barraged by that guy. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, an alternative opening is you can start, like, Ring of Protection, Tango Tango, and then you buy a Stout when you're here, so you can get a Bassy in lane. Um, if you're against, like, an Axe or someone else with physical damage, that's really, really good. Uh, you can start the Stout Quelling Tango if you think you're going to have, like, absolute free farm. You can always buy that at the side shop, though, so that's not super urgent. If you ever think the lane's going to be contested, kind of like it is now, always are on the side of more region. So in this case, I would have had Stout, a Tango Salve. Uh, because like the chance of you having someone who can harass you is, is quite high. Um, so let's play on. But uh, there's nothing wrong with the two the two branches. It's just like you're probably just gonna toss them away, and you could have four more tangos, which you're probably gonna end up needing later on down the line. Get fast forward this. So like right now, what you can be doing is you don't want to go too close. And I totally understand. Actually, you shouldn't be too scared to go that close because like they can't fissure rocket barrage combo you. You can just blink away if they really do go for that. This is yeah, gonna um, what you can do is if you don't want to walk up, you aggro the creeps. Um, if you don't know what that means, if you go within 500 range of a creep, which is about, eh, well, next few plays, but um. We'll pause and show it. So, like, here are their creeps. If you aggro it from, like, right here, what that means is you attack one of their heroes. It's not if it's this hero, that hero, that hero, this fucking wyvern. Uh, it, it doesn't matter which one you do. As long as you're within 500 range of creeps and you attack, click on any enemy hero, the creeps will automatically aggro to you. And what you do with that is you take the creeps and you pull them towards you. That way they have to go farther up to harass you, and you get creeps that are closer to you. So in this case, you would pull these creeps to about where your ranged are, and you could safely last hit them from there. Um, so if you're ever in a lane like this, or something where you're scared to walk up, which... Like, you would take a lot of harass right now, if you walked up. Like, you feasibly could. Um, that's where more regen would come in handy, because you can take more risk for the earlier CS. Um, so that's what, that's what that would let you do. Um, just safely get those creeps without taking too much damage. Let's go back and see what's going on here. Uh, that was gonna be anything too eventful. Uh, this this seems stupid. You, you could have the mana break. Like that earth shaker's getting really close, so you want to be able to get the mana break chops on them. Like all that's gonna help you do is handle the harass a little better. And she, it's just it's it's all right. It's it's probably not ideal though. 
But uh, I, I almost always start mana break first, like regardless of the lane. Because they want to run up on you. or if, Like in this, even if you get Rocket Barrage in a creep wave, like who cares? You're going to split the damage with all your creeps. It does barely any damage at level 1 now. Well, particularly when it's split. So you could trade mana break hits, and that means less Rocket Barrage just later. Did I misclick or... Are you... Oh no, you just watched that entire gank. Okay. I, did you miss... You probably missed a bunch of creeps doing that, right? Yeah, you're just standing there. You just, like... You can't help mid. Like, there's nothing you can do as an anti-mage. Your hero's just standing there. You miss, like, three creeps. During a time in which you, you'll have pretty much good control of this lane. There's no reason to watch a gank for that long. So that, that's just basically like any different times. It's not anything particular about AM, but then you hear like, particularly for one position, like what are you gonna do? You're, you're an AM. You're not TPing there. Um, the poor man shield's a great pickup. That's really good because he's eventually gonna get flag and like harass you with it, right? And his right clicks are kind of annoying, so it's definitely a good pickup. So after this, like, what, what you, your choices right now are, am I going to get a Ring of Health or am I going to get Treads? Um, getting a little bolt there, I like it. So you also have a thing about, like, opportunity cost. So you went there, I think you did get that, no, you didn't get that kill. So you, you don't even get this kill, and, like, this takes you, like, 30 seconds of doing this. You almost die, you blow a south. Um... And the whole time you're doing this, man, new client, very fun. So the, the whole time you're doing, so stupid. The whole time you're doing this, you're missing this creep wave. This is a huge creep wave that you could be farming. Uh, the Enigma gets that kill. You're like, okay, I'm gonna go back to base. You could blink and stuck on the tree line. So you're stuck there for another 10 seconds, missing a bunch of creeps here. So like. You don't want to go too far for kills. Like, if I'm committing more than one blink to a kill, I'm probably going too far. Because, like, you, you, these two, three waves of creeps that you just missed out on is your ring of health, your boots. Like, those things are so important. Because, like, once you have... When you have your boots, you're going to be able to harass the shit out of this guy. Like, really hard. Same thing with him. He doesn't have boots. You have boots. You can, like, walk up to him, start autoing him, and then he rocket barrages, you just walk away. So that's like really big. And then having the Ring of Health means like you can take their harass and just walk away and just regen from it too. You should have went for that creep. There's no reason to... Like that range creep is going to be there. Like you have to prioritize which creeps you're going to get to get the maximum amount. Like getting getting the most out of your laning phase and missing creeps is just like... Or sorry, you should always be getting the most out of your laning phase and like don't miss creeps for no reason at all. It's just... It's like when you're in a lane that's like pressured like this, like every moment you get that's free creeps, like you have to make count. Because like if I have an absolutely free lane on anti mage, I'm gonna have like 90 creeps by 10 minutes. Because you can jump between these camps. Okay, this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah, I mean, if if your supports will communicate, you just tell them like, hey, don't do that. There's no point in doing this. You're gonna force me to creep right here, expose me to ganks, and take my last hits, and, and like get nothing for it. There's there's no reason for him to be doing this. Um, but if, if you can't get someone to stop doing shit like this, and what you want to do is just push the creep wave, like just auto it, auto it all the way down to the tower each time, and then go to these camps and farm these camps. So, like, that's your ideal farming pattern. So right now you should be getting treads. Uh, a straight battle for your rush is terrible. Uh, we'll see what you get. I, I I, don't watch the replay before going to this. I just straight go into it and just start looking at shit. So you auto it down. And now, what do you do? Just hanging out. Goes to the easy camp. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Those are nice farming patterns. Uh, this is really annoying that that's stacked. I actually tell supports do not stack more. Don't stack these two camps when I'm an anti mage because you'll actually hurt my farm. Because unless you have a salve, like, you can't do those camps. Or you have to like pull a creep wave into it, then you can do it. Um, yeah, dipshit. Okay, there was no reason to blink from that. I don't know. Where the hell are you going? Okay, yeah, you know, you you don't travel across the map for a fight. You're you're an anti mage. That's like three waves of creeps you're missing. Where do you, where do you end up going? 
Yeah, no, you don't you don't do that. You TP to fights if you if you need to go to them like urgently. But it's nine minutes. No one expects anything to show up to shit in nine minutes. It's it's no reason for you to do it. Now they all got aggroed over to here. Man, you could add creeps and then when they moved over here you just jungle this shit. So you it, like by doing that stupid movement you, you missed out on a lot too. Uh, you should definitely deliver your treads. This would be nice. So the reason you want the treads before the battle fury is one, it helps your combat efficiency. So if you need to jump and harass people or if you want to go actually show up to like a skirmish that's near you, like you can actually fight uh, pretty reasonably well. Uh, and then it also lets you jungle like this, it lets you do it way quicker. And because it lets you jungle like that much faster, it makes it more worthwhile than straight rushing the battle fury. Because you'll get them both at like the like you you'll get a straight battle fury or battle fury treads at about the same timing because you can farm this with the treads and since you could farm that for like another like five minutes before you'd have your your battle fury uh, you end up with treads battle fury at the same timing when if you just have it rushing a battle fury you would just be sitting in the line it also lets you like it let's say they just start stacking three or four people here or something dumb like that um, it would let you just go into the woods and creep without really being bothered too much. So uh, you are doing the correct build right now. So you do you do want to get stats. Uh, generally by level 11 you do want your blink max, particularly with that, that new change because now it like changes at every level. <laughs> every game is a little different, but you pretty much always want stats. Some exceptions are um, if you have a lane where you can play like really like let's say I'm one v oneing on dying or something or like a tide hunter, I might skill like two points into mana break just so I can keep their mana super low because those are really int heavy heroes who are really dependent on having their mana. If you keep their mana at basically zero, um, if you keep their mana at zero, then they can't TP to fights and actually contribute something. They had this one game where it was an AM versus an undying, still one v one. Uh, completely destroy him like early on in the lane, but he sits there for like 10-12 minutes with zero mana. So like the point where he's most impactful. Okay, there's no reason you should be hiding here. Uh, instead of hiding, like you you, you could have probably safely farmed that way. You, you don't want to be be here for fights. Like you, you knew the gank was coming, so you like ran away, but you could have safely farmed that probably. And then you jump to these camps. Like you don't, you don't just sit here. That's very, very inefficient. So, uh, one of the other guys in the thread talked about how AM's all about farming efficiency. Sitting in a, in a tree line here because you can get ganks coming is not efficient. Like if I knew five people were in this area, maybe I'd sit in the tree line. Uh, but more likely than not, I would just blink to the inside part of my jungle until I think they're gone. Like they're either gonna kill a tower or waste time trying to kill me, then kill a tower. But I'm not gonna die. Like that's the end. That's the end of the story. Um, so you're max the blink mouse, that's good, you, you get the skill build down. Uh, so people just mindlessly do shit, like they'll just max every ability, like as it comes, like <laughs> they'll skill. This is amazing at one level, and they'll like, wait till level 10 to get it. They'll go 4, 4, 0, just like, a super pub thing. I, I never see that in like my level of games really, because I, I play it like mid 4k. <clears throat> but bad people will do bad things, that's, that's a constant. Um, so you always want to prioritize lane farm. Uh, like right now, you knew there's some people here. I don't think you can see that yellow guy. They're just showing on the mini map. Um, you want to be in lane. Like it's just a wind ranger. A wind ranger is someone you can just jump on and harass to like to your heart's content, and she can't do anything about it. You don't want to go mid for farm because you're gonna farm this wave, and then you're gonna feel like you have to get back, and there's gonna be nothing for you to really do. You jump over to here, you farm this, and like I guess you could bounce back and forth between that, or you can go deeper into the woods. But here you'd be able to more like succinctly jump back and forth, jump back and forth. Like you push this all the way to the tower, force one of them to respawn, and then go to the woods. And that creates space for your team. Like even right now as an anti mage, you're like, oh I'm in farm mode. But like pushing this creates farm for you and um and create space for your team because someone's gonna have to respond if they don't want to respond to it cool you're just gonna get free chip damage on their tower you can do it as your hero or you can just push your creep wave to it and go back to the jungle whatever you want if you sit there they're more likely to tp but um like there's nothing wrong with that seems like an earth shaker cool earth shaker is nothing you, there's no point in even leaving here right now because you have vision of this and it's just an earth shaker like he can't do anything he doesn't hurt you he doesn't really do damage. 
Because you're an anti mage. And unless he like walk, and he doesn't have a blink, so like he he'd have to walk up and echo you. At which point you just walk away. Um. Double kill, oh man. <coughs> I was busy talking about that, and I missed what the hell just happened. We won that a little bit. So going to complete your battle for you. You got 110 CS right now. That's okay. It's definitely not bad. That's respectable. I think you play this well too, based off of what I saw. So you're farming here now. They're trying to push. They're trying to go after this. The fight's about to break. I think you TP into this a little early because they get very easily backed up from this right now. Okay, and that's that is not what you do. <laughs> but that is what the Enigma does. So. The reason you don't blink forward is you're an anti mage. You are super squishy right now. That Wind Ranger catches you with a shackle and then just her and her team kill you. You're not an initiation hero. You're key. what you want to do. The way you want to fight anti mage early on, like before you have a manta, basically, and even even when you have the manta, you're still kind of squish. But you, you just have to play it by like the game and what feels right. So they're gonna they're gonna push this tower. Like your team's here. You got an undying. You got a Veno. They they have ways to draw out the fight and like do some do some fucking damage, right? Uh, they have a Wind Ranger, a pretty high mana pool here. I've got a Wyvern. Gyro is also pretty high mana. So they got people with fucking mana. So once this fight starts, you, you're like pushing waves and you're farming, and then once this fight breaks out, then you TP in. Because you don't want them to be able to focus you down and burst you initially, because then that fight's like worth it for them. Even if, unless they get 5 or wiped after killing you, then that's probably not worth it. But like the way you play that, if they just picked you and backed, which they very easily could have done. Actually, I guess the Enigma had blinked, so they might have gotten 5 man black hole, but they could have easily bursted you if that Enigma was, like, slightly out of position or something like that. But, like, as it was, like, they missed, sh missed the shackle and you didn't die. But playing it like that is, is like, super, super risky. So, it, it's definitely not worth it. <coughs> Let's go back to farming. You probably don't want to... Probably don't want to try and do Ancients. Like, right now, this farming is way more efficient. Because this, um... Right now, from here, where do you go, right? You can jump into their woods, where the whole enemy team is, or you have to blink all the way that way. So going there to farm is inefficient. You only do it if it's like in your route to get somewhere where there's more farm. So right now you could like blink to mid, you can just farm this, jump here, uh, you can't kill a stack, or you just blink straight across into your woods, farm your woods, push them this wave, and then back into your woods again after the next minute's up. Like that's how you want to farm. Uh, and uh, another thing is I do this pretty much every game. I will almost always get a Vlad's. It is so rare I won't get a Vlad's. Because um, what a Vlad's does is it makes everything about anti-mage better. Like when I first started playing the hero, I didn't understand when to get a Vlad's. And the answer is after your Battle Fury. So you go Treads, Battle Fury, Vlad's. <clears throat> and the reason, the reason you get the Vlad's is because it does so many things. Uh, I've heard people describe it as like a Midas on anti-mage. Um, I don't think that's entirely true. It's like a Midas on crack for anti-mage. So, notice how your HP is low because you did Ancients. Your HP, you can kill a quad stack. Like, if this was quad stack, you could kill this quad stack and be at full HP at the end of it. Like, that's how good it is. And even if you weren't full HP, you link to another camp, then you're full HP. Um, when you're pushing a lane, you give 5 armor to all your creeps. It means your, your creep, the towers take longer to kill your creeps. And, um... <coughs> The towers take longer to kill your creeps, and you push harder, because you're increasing their damage by 15%, right? Oh, obviously you don't have it. Um, you increase their damage by 15%, you increase their armor by 5, and you increase their regen. So your creeps are now regening, they, it takes longer for them to die, and they're doing more damage. It lets you push so hard. Another thing it lets you do is trade with people. So, um, Sarah's got a Helm of Dom, he's got a Vlad's. Okay, whatever. So it probably applies to all three of them. So with this gyro, you can jump on him. Like, if you think he's alone, you can just blink on him, start harassing him, and then walk away. And his regen, it, he's going to regen much slower than you. Uh, so then you you blink to, like, camps, and you heal up, and the gyro's now at half HP. And he has to decide, like, oh, I can keep farming, but the AM's just going to come do that again, or their team's going to gank me. Like, he shouldn't feel safe showing on a map with 200 HP. That's why he's walking back to base right now. So if you can bring him to not even 200, like 600 HP and remove a lot of his mana, congrats, that guy now can't show up to a team fight. So if your team's fighting here, you harass this guy, you take 300 of his mana, 
you take 300 of his mana and like a third of half his health or something, and then you just leave and you go back to farming. Then he can't show up to that fight, and he doesn't feel safe farming there anymore. So it does it does so so much. <coughs> have to forgive me. I'm overcoming a cold. Um, so the light, and it, it lets you farm quicker, gives you more regen. Oh, oh I let you solo. Once you get a Yasha, you can solo Roshan too. So you get a Yasha, Vlad's treads. You solo Roshan. You need some stats too, but you you don't you don't have enough stats. Uh, leveling this is retarded. They really don't have that much magical damage. So the way you're gonna die to a Wind Ranger isn't from this. It's gonna be from her from a shackle into an ult, and the rest of them right clicking you. Yeah, his magic damage is alright. His magic damage sucks. You're gonna die to his Winter's Curse. You're gonna die to his physical damage slash mana burn. You're gonna die to him right clicking you, most likely. Um, but that would only really be in a team fight. Like, there's not really. Like, they have magical damage, but you should get stats to survive, like, the right click damage. Maxing your spell shield is so dumb. The scaling on it's terrible. It pretty much only really pays off once you have a heart. <coughs> So the way I usually like to skill it is I'll only get one point in this with rare exceptions, like if I'm against a Zeus, then I might skill it a little more. Um, <clears throat> I'll max my blink by level 11. As I'm about to complete my mana, my, my mana, my manta, uh, I'll max my, I'll get my mana break maxed. That way I, you know, I optimize my kill potential and my teamfight contribution with it. And then sometime around when my heart's getting completed, I'll buy a spell shield, or I'll max spell shield. Which is usually around like level 20, 22. That's why I tend to have that maxed. Um, just because the, st the stats help so much. So something really important to touch on is like, I don't think people fully understand why you get stats. Like, yeah, his gains blow. His strength gains only like 1.2, um, and that that is a big part of it. It helps you last hit a little more. It gives you some more strength, so you survive a little bit. But a huge aspect of it is actually the int. So if you if you don't get stats, you can't afford blinking from camp to camp to camp all the time. So what you want to do when you blink is treads, so let you go to int treads, blink, go back to agi treads, and every time you blink you go to int treads. And with that and some stats, you can actually support blinking pretty much non-stop. If you don't, um, if you don't have stats, you'll actually run out of mana. Like that, the, the stats is like very important. It's like just on the threshold of being incredibly worthwhile to get the stats. Or incredibly necessary, I guess I should say, not worthwhile. But uh, there's nothing wrong with the manta, but like I'd only manta rush. If they have a silence, I'm really worried about, and their team most certainly does not have a silence. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we're doing now. So I noticed, like, you, you seem to have a pretty good farm at the end. You had almost 10 creeps a minute when I looked at the Dota buff. Um, that's pretty nice. Generally, if a game goes 50 minutes, I'll have probably close to like 12 CS a minute, maybe 15. Yeah, no, 15 is really high. Um, I'll usually get over 10 though, like 11, 12 is pretty standard. Okay, once that black hole fails, you leave, right? Okay, cool. See, like, and if you had a Vlad's right now, notice your mana's full, your health is kinda low. If you had a Vlad's right now, you can just go back to farming. That's another big thing. I'm like, you're still showing up to fights. Like, you're not in a state where you wanna fight right now. It's 25 minutes. Wow, you're really far behind. You didn't even die that much. It's really weird. Must be the farming change and your lack of creeps. Like, once you have the battle fair, you should be accelerating and you should be at over or about 10 creeps a minute right now, since you've had a bunch of space, but you just haven't been using it. You've been trying to fight too much. So right now you're going to have the Manta finished, which is good. It lets you fight a little more. But like I said, without the Vlads, it doesn't let you just man up on people without possibly having to go back to base if they have any damage on them. Speed this up. It's taking a while. <clears throat> okay, that was stupid. So here, your choices are split push and like, or you can you can deal with this guy top. So you see, it's a lichen. He's got a necro three. He is fucking strong right now. You manta, you get blink initiator on. Like you don't know where the earthshaker is. You don't know where anything is really. Well, you know, there's a lichen there who wants to kill your tower. You shouldn't be TPing in first. Like I said, you TP in to respond to stuff until you're super big. Like in, if you had a heart, you live there. If you have 
Um, the Vlad's, you probably live there. Mm, maybe not with the Vlad. Well, actually, no. I think you're TPing with low HP, don't you? I don't think you're full. Oh, see? You're going to TP in with uh, less than full HP. That's not the problem. If you had 500 more hit points, 400 more hit points, you probably would have lived there. But it's like all those things, like, all the little things just add up. Like, Andrew H. one of those heroes where every little thing, like, adds up to the whole. And that's why being efficient is so important on him. Because every little thing leads to, like, you winning. Or it leads to you winning or leads to you losing. Okay? If you had 200 HP. Uh, yeah, you would have If you notice, your blink... He echoed, all of his shit was on cooldown. Because he didn't change stuns properly. Or, or, his, or no, his echo was already on cooldown, that's what it was. And, uh, you had 40 HP when you... You, you got out of the stun with 40 HP. If you had... 400 more health, then you would have lived. 200 more health, you would have lived. Your team cleans up. Oh no, wait, no, your team does not clean up. I lied. Your team gets fucked up. But like, if you TP in response to this, like, that's a pretty big echo, or a pretty big mana void. You can blink mana. And then if he does that to someone, you can mana drain them fully, because you still mana, you still drain mana when someone's under, um, Golden Brace. <clears throat> Shane so loses tower, you lose value, you lose push time, and you're dead. All things that are that are very, very bad on anti match. Okay, let's see what you choose to do here. Once again, like now you have a Manta, and you only have one level in Mana Break. <laughs> it's it's like why even bother rushing the Manta if you have max Mana Break? You're not gonna. I mean, I guess there's not really any other item to get, but you won't be able to jump Mana Burn Mana Break people to death because you don't have levels in it. Nice man to dodge. Like here, I think you should be pushing bottom super hard. So you see like three people middle. I think that's a fourth. That we see. That was a close call. That's cool. Nice. This guy's in some good black holes. He's like saving you guys ass here. <coughs> so yeah, you could have been still pushing bottom this whole time, farming the woods, getting that tower. And like forcing them to respawn. Like, that's another thing. Anti mage, like one of the biggest things you can do. It's like you split push, and then now that you have a manta, well, I guess the lycan could probably man fight you. They can't, they can't kill you unless they TP like two or three people, right? So they need like probably the lycan plus either the earthshaker or the wyvern with their ults to probably kill you. That, that, that's like the only thing you're really scared of, and that's what they need to TP to handle you. They TP the Lycan by himself, cool, your team's now taking a 4 and 4. A TP 2, your team's now taking a 4 and 3. And the point is, like, when they TP... Sorry, when they, um... <clears throat> that, was, that was bold TP. Um, when they TP to respond to you, you don't die. So you just blink away. Like, without without either of those two, they can't kill you, right? So you just blink away. And go back to farming their woods. Now they they can push in a wave. Their whole woods are farmed, and then you're at ancients and you're pushing other waves. So it doesn't inconvenience you at all, and it hurts them a lot. Oh, if the star gets a butterfly, you're gonna be a sad little anti mage. So now you've died. It says you died twice. This one is more than twice. I know there's the there's one early on. There's one right here. I think you just got low a bunch of other times. <coughs> Did they not even rush yet? I don't think they rushed yet. Yeah, both of your both of your lineups could have rushed already. This guy's got a medallion and mech. Undoubtedly, could have could have rushed. You need the lads to do it though, or like other people there. <clears throat> so you get the basher, and what the basher is good for if, is if you're split pushing and like trying to get solo pickoffs, and it, it can be pretty good in fights if your team doesn't have CC. And your team is lacking in the CC area. Like, the Venno will prevent people from kiting you to an extent. Uh, actually, yeah, except for the like, and he can prevent pretty much everyone from kiting you. So like, it's not necessarily wrong to get the Abyssal or the Basher, but you have to like play it like you have it. Like you split push and you look for picks, and if you ever catch a support alone, you, you kill him. If you you can kill the gyro, you can kill you can kill everyone on their team. The wind ranger can stall it out with her wind run shit, but any of the other three people should die. And Lycan's a little too strong right now, but you could probably do some chip on him if you really wanted to. But like three of them are kill potential. But the, the truth is like you should have way more items right now, 
and be able to even solo kill a like like that shouldn't be a problem for you you should have like a abyssal and like a butterfly if you really want to go like super hard damage oriented Now I'm in this lead, it's like hurting you so much this game. It's like more times where you have to go back to base when you wouldn't have had to. Like that's a lot of this, like you're, you're at 300 creeps, which doesn't seem too bad, like that it's not bad, but considering the amount of space you had and how few deaths you had, it's like you're not using the time well. Like you should have 400 plus creeps this game, probably closing around 450 right now would be pretty reasonable. And like that puts you items ahead. And maybe you could have even gotten some solo kills, and your team could have taken better fights. Your team's just kind of like falling behind right now, and you're not there to pick up the slab. Like I doubt you're much. Yeah, you're not much farther ahead of these guys. You should farm fat much faster than both of those heroes. At this point, you probably want to be like at least an item ahead of them, and you're not. Let's go by that. That's a good fight. I mean, Tinker died. It sucks, but. Uh, I also disagreed the BKB. Like the, see, the thing about the BKB is, like, yeah, it can stop you from being chain stunned, and it can stop him from mana draining you, but it doesn't give you enough damage or, like, truly enough survivability. Like, you're still only at, like, 2k HP right now. Like, the heart would have been good. Heart butterfly. Or a butterfly will let you man fight, and it'll result in less mana being drained from his thing. Like, I. I'm just, I don't see the call for the BKB. Like, you shouldn't be in a situation where you get, like, super initiated on, and it's not really obvious. Like, oh man, I'm pushing all the way to their tier 3s. Oh, and they blink echoed me. Like, that shouldn't ever really be a thing, right? Because you should see that coming, and you met, and you just blink away. And then, once you're in the fights... Like, in this game, I, I think I probably would just want pure damage. Like, get a, get a butterfly. Butterfly, abyssal, and then you just go man up on the gyro all the time. It's really awkward because he has a butterfly now, particularly when I see him with the butterfly. Because um, you're going to need an MKB, you're going to need an Abyssal to main fight him, and like you need so much right now, and you just don't have it. Like, butterfly, Abyssal, and MKB is what you need. I think you even just have to... Your team doesn't really have a way to kill that gyro without you, right? It made with the midnight pulse and like a black hole or something. It's definitely not user. Like it's totally on you. Like Ants must be really good against the Jero because it doesn't get hurt by the magic damage. You can blink right on top of him and you can just chain stun him and just fuck his shit up. But since you're so far behind and he went a butterfly, which is actually really smart on him because you don't want to have to build an MK. If you went MKB, it's just like okay, I could just not get a butterfly. But since he got a butterfly, it makes it say you have to get an MKB. See, the BKB didn't do shit for you. Because they still have the Winter's Curse, right? So that's still like three and a half seconds of you getting fucked up. That buyback is like so painful for you too. Because like, you need your items right now. So being forced to buy back there sucks, even if it was necessary. Oh, that's, that's game losing right there. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think, well, actually, I guess team wipe him. He's almost got satanic. So, like, at this point, you don't have the damage to kill either the Lycan or the Gyro, really. Like, the Gyro can just sit there and man fight you, the Lycan can run away or man fight you. They have lots of chain stuns, and the BKB doesn't do enough, really. Like, I, I very, very rarely get a BKB. Like, I think. I don't even know what you'd have to get. You'd have to have, like, every hero on the enemy team would have to have, like, some sort of chain stun for me to really get it. Like, they, their lineup just doesn't justify it. <clears throat> they get it. And I would get it much later, probably, too. In this game, if I chose, if I decided it was the right item after I got, like, the MKB, the Butterfly, and the, um, Abyssal, then I would probably get it. Like, those items are gonna let you split push and, like, actually get the kills you need. Like, they're dying just because they're playing stupidly. So she has an MKB now, too. This isn't even a, this isn't even a butterfly game anymore. Maybe, maybe an AC. Or maybe not even, well, it's, it's a tough call. 
The actually, yeah, the AC would be really good because this guy doesn't have one. So he can bring his armor really low. Like that's only like 50 resistance, not even 40. <clears throat> okay, well, this thing's gonna wind down. I noticed you buy a shadow blade. That's completely worthless. I'm assuming it's on the last like ditch. Oh god, I really need something right now. Items, but you could just. If you really need that, you can just buy like a Sanj or something, I don't know. Something with more strength, like what does a Shadow Blade do? Maybe you can escape, but they've got a Necrobook. So, you're hoping the Necrobook is down, and yeah, they don't have anything else. So you're just praying the Necrobook is down. Uh, yeah, so to summarize, like, you need to improve your early game farming patterns, and you need to have, um, uh, proper decision making. Like, you jump to a few fights over here early on, that cost you like three waves of farm. Um, you weren't farming this efficiently when your Veno was being dumb. You weren't pushing the wave and farming this. You like lollygagged in the jungle. You went to different lanes to farm when you should have been going top, so you can abuse the jungle as well. You weren't split pushing hard enough. Like you weren't forcing them to make decisions. Like the crux of playing anti mage is forcing people to make unfavorable decisions, because you you push so hard and fast that they're. Like, let's say they're sieging here right now. This is up. They have five here. Let's even say they have have an Aegis. Like, you have an Enigma. They want to take this fight very, very carefully. Because if they fuck up, they get black hole. Like, all th the huge fights in this were, like, the Enigma getting, like, a monster black hole. So they don't want to just rush in there and hope, because then you just TP back, the Enigma gets a good black hole, and you guys team wipe them. So you pushing this really hard is like, okay, do we feel comfortable forcing this fight? And the answer, more often than not, is going to be no. And then they have to respond to you. So they need to TP two people back, which means that your four heroes that are here can go on them, and you can TP back. So now it's a five on three, assuming they catch them. Because uh, you, you usually result, you'll usually have stragglers, so that's an option. So you, you never force them to make the hard decisions. And that's like what AM is about. You force them to make hard decisions, which forces errors and, for, and allows you to win the game. Um, so your farming patterns are bad, uh, you didn't split push hard enough, and your itemization is pretty crappy. Great. Okay, you do have an abyssal blade now. Uh, <coughs> so the, um, the, the butterfly would still be good, because the lycan doesn't have an MKB, and this guy doesn't have an MKB. Just the wind ranger does. So it, I take it back what I said before, it's, you can still probably get a butterfly. That deso is really obnoxious though. Um, so like every time he misses that black hole, you just just get fucking shredded. Like they're just taking fights poorly. Like honestly, they can just. This guy should have an AC. This guy should have an MKB. All their farm is terrible, but the problem is that yours is also really bad, and you don't have the items needed to compete anymore. The hell out of Silver Edge. Yeah. So that about that about sums it up. So the the farming patterns were the really big thing. The not split pushing and the bad itemization. I noticed almost all your items had you getting a BKB. I can tell you, like the BKB is good in like professional games and like high level games. And this people are not coordinated enough. The heart is almost always better, just because the effective HP you have with like 60 something resist on each. There's no reason to get the BKB. BKB's practically redundant. Then you got a BKB and you max your spell shield too. I don't remember the exact timing of it, but... So, game ends here. So there you go. Um, I hope this was helpful. You know, if you have any comments, recommendations, want a little more help, feel free to send me a message or comment on the video. Alright man, good luck with your AM games.